Campaigning is beginning for Algeria's presidential election and President Abdelaziz Bouteflika says his poor health will not stop him from running for a fourth term. In a letter to the public, he promised constitutional reforms if he wins. Thousands, though, were protesting on Friday against his re-election. Bouteflika registered his candidacy earlier this month despite suffering a stroke last year. This election will happen on April 17th. Six candidates have been approved to run. The former Prime Minister Ali Benflis is seen as Bouteflika's main challenger. 77-year-old Bouteflika's opponents say his ailing health means he's incapable of ruling the country. He spent three months in France being treated last year after his stroke. The Islamic Movement of Society for Peace and the Islamic Renaissance Movement have both said they will be boycotting this vote in Algeria. We've got Nabila Ramdani with us in London, a journalist and political commentator specialising in Middle Eastern and Arab affairs. It's kind of a fair argument, I think, Nabila, from these protests to say that a man who had a stroke, was treated offshore for three months and is 77 years old, probably may, you know, might not be the best person to be running for president. Well, yes, absolutely. It's not difficult at all to see why uh, people are, in, are increasingly expressing uh, their frustration and indeed their anger uh, at the persistence of President uh, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, uh, you know, to stand uh, again for election for a fourth time after having been in power for 15 years and now seeking uh, re-election for another uh, five years. And this is precisely why we saw uh, people on mass gathering, gathering in in in, a ma in an Algeria stadium on Friday. Mm nearly 5,000 people of them, mainly Islamists and indeed secularists, voicing their oppositions and calling for boycott to the elections, but also calling for, calling for political reforms to a political system they vastly see as, uh, as corrupt. And there will be more uh, m uh, m movements uh, of protests uh, mm. uh, in the run-up to the elections and indeed d during the presidential election, which uh, the presidential campaigning, which offici officially starts today. Sorry, is today there, and, the, and in fact... So, sorry, Nabila. Is there a flip side, though, to the argument? I'm very conscious of focusing on that one side. Are there people who support him and think, actually, he's done quite well and could do well in the future? Well, absolutely, and not least of all, when uh, uh, Abdelaziz Bouteflika's presidency was announced, the uh, spokesperson for the National Liberation Front Party, to which uh, the president belongs, said that, uh, uh, for example, the US president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, was... Uh, 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 was re-elected four times and he was in a wheelchair and mm. there's of course a great tradition of elderly statesmen uh, with you know uh, who were in power for a long time uh, William Gladstone uh, who was Prime Minister of Great Britain until mm -hmm. he was 84 mm -hmm. or Winston Churchill who was 80 when he stepped down or uh, President Charles de Gaulle in France who, mm. who uh, stayed in power for a very long time as well so uh, but it's you know nonetheless you know this is a, a man who's not you know, clearly unwell, and the demands of the modern world mm. are so m much more uh, exacerbated now, you know, with new technologies, and uh, especially in the field of communications, you expect any head of state to respond to challenges 24-7. So to that all, end, Nabira, Almost instantly. Forgive me again. To that end, does he have a known deputy or known running mate, someone who, uh, I'm careful how I use this phrase, but could almost be pulling the strings or, or doing some of that extra, uh, you know, heavy lifting behind the scenes if he were to be re-elected. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't quite uh, oh, get sorry, that What I'm saying is the de his deputy, basically. If he is perhaps not capable of doing all these things which the modern president needs to, does he have a known deputy or running mate who, who could do that and who the people might trust? Well, you know, uh, loyalists to uh, Abdelaziz Bouteflika also uh, highlight the fact, as you rightly said, that uh, he, he became, uh, whether, whether, whatever your views on Bouteflika, he became uh, associated with a period of relative stability uh, in Algeria. When he came to power in 1999, the country was racked by a murderous civil war, uh, which led a very bitter taste. And, you know, uh, there's no appetite in Algeria for violence or any type of bloodshed any longer because of the very recent history of, of this civil war and indeed the War of Independence which ended not long ago in 1962 in historical terms and, and for that reason and given the context, the international context in which Algeria finds itself in at the moment, you know, all its borders are effectively uh, volatile, chaotic, mm -hmm. surrounded by countries which have uh, gone through violent revolutions, not including Libya but also, you know, more vol um, volatile countries like Tunisia or Egypt right. uh, and indeed Mali for example. Uh, people argue that, you know, 
him and indeed the apparatus that mm. is associated with him, i.e. the generals and the FLN elites, are the guarantors of stability and people, uh, there's a very strong uh, demand for more security and indeed stability rather than democracy. Nabila Ramdani, always a pleasure to talking to you. Thank you for joining us today.